Okay, <laughs> here we are. This video, I, what I'm going to do in this video is, and I'm quite terrified at this moment, I should say, but I'm gonna start to talk about what it means to examine the output. We fed in some input, we did the feed forward algorithm, we got some output. I want to now look at that output and I want to say, huh, what do I think about that output really? Is it good output? Is it bad output? Is it right on? Is it a little bit off? And I'm going to, this is a technique known as supervised learning. I, the teacher, am now going to say this output is incorrect. Please adjust all your settings to make this output more correct. And I have done this before. I have done this in a video about linear regression um, and, um, uh, and gradient descent. I have done this in uh, a video where I made a simple perceptron, where I did this same type of learning algorithm. In fact, I've done this in genetic algorithm examples where I'm not using the same exact technique, but a different technique to sort of teach a system to do something. So this is what I want to do. You can think of all of these weights that are inside the network as these little knobs, little settings, and I just want to like always adjust the settings. And so a key, there's going to be key terms that are going to come up here, like error. What's the difference between the output and the known correct answer? That's the error. The cost, well, over a large training data set, what's the sort of cumulative error? of all, uh, That's the sort of cost, the current cost of the neural network. And then this term that's called back propagation. So if the error is the thing that tells me how to tune these weights, the error is right here. It's going to tell me how to tune these weights. Oh, how do I tune these weights? They're not connected to the error. They're connected to the thing that's connected to the error. So I need to propagate backwards. Feed forward is the process of moving all the data forward through the network. Back propagation is the process of taking the error and basically like feeding backwards the error through the network. Now here's where, we have, here's where I have to admit something. This is probably, I would say, I'm trying to think of a topic that I've tackled in any of my videos that's like harder than this. I can't think of one. I don't know that I fully have a, de a deep understanding of this. I have implemented it before. I have spent a lot of time. I even prepared some notes. I prepared some notes for the first time in my life, which are right here, that I'm going to use while I start to explain this. But it's kind of unrealistic, and I'm probably not the best person to go into all of the math. So what I'm going to attempt to do is give a kind of just general overview of how the algorithm works, look at how pieces of it actually work, the math of it, um, in particular as it relates to matrix matrices, because I'm going to need that understanding to implement it in code. And then I'm going to present some of the formulas to you that are the formulas for how you change the weights based on the error, and then try to implement those formulas in code. So this is my plan, uh, so probably take two or three videos, but so my goal is really the implementation. And I'm gonna to provide to you a bunch of resources if you wanna dive deeper into the math. Let me just mention those to you. So uh, uh, number one, uh, Make Your Own Neural Network by Tariq Rashid. This is a book that I was reading on the subway this morning. You can actually get, get it uh, on, the ki on ki your Kindle app for a very inexpensive amount. Um, you can also, uh, Find it here on, on a lot of books that I re recommend on my coding train, uh, amazon.com slash shop slash coding train. Um, the uh, three blue, one brown video series, what is a neural network? What is backpropagation really doing? Backpropagation calculus. You could pause right now and go watch these videos, which will give you a much deeper set of knowledge about the math that's, that I'm going to use, as well as this uh, uh, the essence of calculus, right? One of the things that's used in the math is the chain rule and the product rule. So this is this this particular video might be useful to you, as well as um, this particular online book, which I found through the three blue one brown videos, neural networks and deep learning. And I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention Siraj's YouTube channel that I've mentioned a lot on this video has a lot of different, uh, lot of, a lot of my videos, a lot of different videos on similar content, especially if you're interested in Python and using the TensorFlow library and that kind of stuff. Okay, <laughs> so that's that. Now let me start, I think, I think we're ready to start. I've erased the whiteboard and I am now ready to start talking about the back propagation algorithm. So let's assume right now that this is my output neuron. 
And just for the sake of simplicity at this moment, let's just pretend this is one of the hidden neurons. But let's just pretend that there's just one of them. So there is some weight. There's also a bias, but we'll come, I'm going to come back to the bias at the very end. So I'm going to kind of do everything without the bias and then come back to the bias. There's some weight which is connecting this hidden neuron to the output neuron. Now, the input of the, the output of this neuron multiplied by the weight is sent through here, passed through the activation function, and we get some sort of answer. Let's say that the answer that we get is 0.7. So this that can be referred to as the guess, the output, but I'm gonna call that, I'm gonna call it the guess. Now, in the case of supervised learning, where I have a prepared data set, where I have sort of like known answers, so I'm going to train the network to have these weights so that later on I can put in unknown data to get good results, I would have some sort of answer. So I'm going to write that here, and I'm going to say the known answer is 1. I wanted this neural with this particular input that came in, I wanted to see the answer of 1. So this means now I also have an error. Error. And the error is calculated with a simple formula. What is the desired output, the answer, minus the guess? What's the difference between those two things? So we can see is that the error is 0.3. So in my simple perceptron and in other videos that I've made, I've then taken this error and used it as a way to basically nudge, nudge that weight. I wanted a 1, I only got 0.7, I can make the weight a little bit higher to get more stuff, right? I want more, I want more stuff, right? I want the weight higher, maybe the bias needs to be adjusted, but with 0.7, I just need to increase that weight, I need to increase the weight in the direction of the error. That's how this works. Now, here's the next piece of this. Let's say, however, that instead of just one weight coming in here, I have two weights because there are two hidden neurons, H1 and H2. Now we have a problem. We have this error, which I know I need to nudge weight one and weight two, but which one's really kind of responsible for the error? There's a lot of blame placing going on here. Normally I would think like, let's try not to blame anybody, but this is the problem. And I could just say like, I don't know, take half of the error, increase them both. Increase them both the same amount. But there's a key aspect of the way that the learning process works with gradient descent and back propagation is we really need to figure out who's responsible for the error. So let me take the scenario, we, these weights could actually be weights, where this weight is 0 0.2 and this weight is 0 0.1. Well, you could be made set, we could now make the argument that this connection is more responsible for the error because it has a higher weight. In fact, it's two-thirds responsible, right? This weight is double of this weight. So in fact, when we do these nudges, we take this error to nudge this one, but we'll nudge it only by 33%. And then we'll take this error, and I know this is going to go out of your view, but it's coming all the way back here, and we'll nudge that by, an up, uh, let's see, can you see this here, 67%. Uh, Actually, I should just do it back here, 67%. So this is a key aspect of the, and, and, and this, I've basically done this before. So this is where we look for this delta weight, we adjust the weight based on that error and the inputs passing through. So maybe this makes sense to you, and if it does, good. <laughs> Here's the tricky aspect. This is why there's something, this is why this video is ostensibly about back propagation. This is not the diagram of the neural network that I created in the previous videos. In fact, this hidden layer is connected to the inputs. And all of those have weights. And uh, I, I spent a lot of time worrying about the indices. Let's get those indices correct. So this, if this is input one, and this is input two, I usually call this, sorry, I usually call those x. And this, by the way, the output we can refer to as y. 
It's usually what's often referred to as y. So if, these are, if this is input 1, x1, input 2, x2, this weight is the weight from 1 to 1. This weight is the weight from 1 to 2. Now that might look backwards to you. <laughs> it's the rate, weight from 1 to 2, or it's connected between hidden 2 and hidden 1. But the reason why I'm numbering it that way is this is, it's going to be in the second row of our matrix. This weight is the second row of our matrix. And this is a weight uh, from 2 to 1, so I write 1, 2. And this is a weight from 2 to 2, so I write 2, 2. So here's the thing. If this error, which is happening right here, is used to tune these two weights proportionally based on their weights, well, how do I connect this error back to these weights? How do they get tuned? Well, it, the, what I need, just this is a, what, one thing that to realize is this is like a little section of what could possibly be a much larger neural network, right? There could be many more layers this way and many more layers that way. So these weights are just tuned based on whatever this neuron's error is. Right here, it's at the end, so I can actually calculate the error directly. But here, they're not connected directly to this error. They're, sorry, here they're not connected. They're connected to these. So what is the error coming out of here? If I just had that, if I had like hidden, um, E for error, error hidden 1, what does that equal? If I, and I knew, if I knew what this was, right? if I knew the error coming out of here, error hidden 1, then I could adjust these weights. Because the error coming out of here adjusts these weights, this error adjusts these weights. And this error, E2, error hidden 2, if I knew what that is, then I could adjust the weights coming into that. So this is the idea of backpropagation. There's an error here. It goes to here. Now I know if I could calculate these errors, then I could continue to go back here. And then if there were more, I would just calculate these errors and keep going this way. So this is the real question. How do I calculate that hidden error? How do I calculate the error of a neuron anywhere within the network that's not necessarily directly connected to the output where that error is just a simple target minus out guess? To figure this out, I'm going to pull just a section of this diagram out over here. I'm going to need to progressively over time make this diagram more and more complicated, but right now I'm going to simplify for a second again. So what I want to do is I just want to take, um, actually it's, so, it's sort of here already, but I just, want, <laughs> I just want to pull it over here. So this is the output, and these are the two hiddens. Uh, this is the weight of, sorry, this is the weight of point 0.2. And this is the weight of 0.1, and the error here is equal to uh, 0 0.3. So what I want to, and this is the hidden layer. What, remember, what I'm trying to, uh, you know, H1 and H2. What I'm trying to calculate <laughs> is the error of hidden 1 and the error of hidden 2. Okay, so the way that I do that is by taking, a, taking this error and getting a portion of it. What portion should I get? And I sort of said this already. Two thirds and one third. So if this is weight one and this is weight two, right? This is a very simple scenario. This is almost like back to that perceptron again. Then what I want to do is say the error of hidden one is weight one divided by weight one plus weight two times the error of the output, E output. The error of hidden 1 is a portion of that output's error. The error of hidden 2 is weight 2 divided by weight 1 plus weight 2 times that output error again. We sort of said this already. I realize now I'm kind of, but this is fine. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to sort of do this twice. So these would actually be the errors here, these are now the errors, and I can just use the same gradient descent algorithm to tune these weights. But this actually is kind of a rare circumstance where you know, everything's just connected to one thing. So what I want to do now is I'm going to make this diagram a little bit more complex. And I'm going to take the case of having more than one output neuron. And see how this works. I'm going to add another, so let's say there's two outputs. 
which means there's error one and error two, right? Maybe this is trying to recognize a true, or, we could actually uh, recognize like true or false or something, or recognize a zero or a one. Um, so in that case, maybe the desired answer is, you know, it's is one and zero, but we got, we got 0.7 and 0.3 as the outputs. So here, this error, oh, I made this two, uh, let's make this 0.4. This error would be negative 0.4, right? And now, what I need to do is have more connections here. And once again, this is, and I'm, this is for this matrix, I've got kind of the same notation, one, one, two, one, uh, one, two, two, two. So if this is our diagram now, with two outputs, so there are two errors, known errors that we can calculate in our supervised learning system, we need to figure out, still figure out, hidden error one, hidden error two. Well, this still stands, right? This is still a part of the error coming out of here. It's the part that, it's the part of, that it's responsible for, it's how much is it responsible for 0.3. And so in that case, this should be error output one. And um, I'm actually just gonna, if it's an error on the output, I'm just gonna say E1. This error coming out of um, hidden neuron one is the same as it was before. It's still the portion of the error based on this weight and this weight. How, how, much, of, how, like, how much are we contributing to that 0 0.3 error? Well, this, this one has a certain percentage and this one has a certain percentage. And that is weight one one divided by one one plus one two. Uh, times that error. Now, here's the thing. That's just how much it's contributing to error one. How much is it contributing to error two? We've got to calculate that as well. And that is um, the portion of these two. And let me give my, make sure I have a lot of space. So how much of weight two one divided by uh, weight two one plus weight two two times uh, error two? So if there Multiple, this is the total cumulative error of hidden neuron one. It's, that can, it's, it's, it's portion of the connection from it to error one, summed with all the other connections to error one, and the portion of its connection to error two, summed with all of the connections to error two. And I, I'm kind of, it's not connected to error two, it's connected to the output, but the output is producing that error. So this is its sum, right? Now, I could do the same thing for this error, it's its portion that it contributes to this error, which is now weight one, two, right? You can see that these are the same, right? This is its portion, weight, it's, that's where it's connected. This is its portion, that's where it's connected, right? It's, um, it's, it's percentage portion of the total weights, all connected to output one, and then, how is it connected to output two? Weight two, two. It's portion of the total uh, of error two, of the error for output two. So this is now how those errors are computed. So again, if the mathematics of gradient descent tells us how to take an error to nudge weights, then we calculated this error, now we can, we calculate the errors coming out of the output. These are our formulas for calculating the errors coming out of the hidden. And those errors are the things that can then, with gradient descent, tell us how to nudge these weights. Then if we had more layers, we could calculate these errors and keep going back. That is back propagation. That is how the hidden errors are calculated. So this is the end of this sort of part one of just sort of like the basic idea of backpropagation. I'm gonna check to see if there are any questions or corrections, which I will mention at the beginning of the next video, where I will also implement at least just this much in the code.